Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 4th, 2022, recorded on 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Happy 4th of July to everyone. Make sure you're being safe out there. We have a lot to talk about today, including what to expect for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season and when will the next storm form. Well, let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, well, we noticed that you're actually pretty quiet for right now, which is definitely good. Over in the East Pacific, we have Hurricane Bonnie. It actually retained its name, but this is Hurricane Bonnie now in the East Pacific and is moving away from coastal Mexico. Dangerous surf and rip current conditions expected for portions of coastal Mexico. Otherwise, no significant concerns there. We are watching a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. Not really expected to do much here, but we'll be moving westward over the next couple of days. And there is some hints, at least in the models, that at least something could try to get going down here briefly in this region similar to Bonnie and then we'll be watching kind of for a lingering frontal system across the Gulf of Mexico and southeast U.S. for potential development and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Looking at Hurricane Bonnie in the East Pacific Basin we noticed that the system is very well organized today. We have deep organized convection banding and an eye structure today so certainly this has now become a pretty strong hurricane uh, still some potential for some rain, uh, light rain impacts are along the coast here of Mexico, but otherwise there is no substantial concerns expected besides rip currents, which are still very dangerous, keep in mind, uh, but no significant rain or wind impacts. And in the Atlantic Basin, all is quiet. That is certainly good news. It is quiet for the 4th of July, so nothing to worry about over the next couple of days. But down the pipeline, we'll have more to talk about, so let's go ahead and jump into what is next to come. In the Atlantic Basin, in terms of the sea surface temperatures here, we noticed that today the overall pattern is pretty substantially different from what we were seeing just a couple of weeks ago. Firstly, today we noticed that the subtropical Atlantic here is actually quite cooler than we have seen in recent months or even years. Now, in the same token, the main development region over the last about week or two has actually cooled off a decent amount. And that is because we've had some pretty strong easterly trade winds that have been blowing acro across this area and helping to upwell cooler water. That will soon reverse and we'll get a warming trend in the Atlantic and that will help to continue the warmth in the MDR while also not really seeing any signs of the subtropics that will be warming up. So this is actually setting the stage for what could be a busy signal and one of the signals that we look for in the deep tropics in terms of the sea surface temperature realm is are the water temperatures in the subtropics <clears throat> the subtropical Atlantic warmer or cooler than the MDR and in this case they seem to be cooler across the board there is more warmth across the MDR meaning that there should in theory be less stability issues and more potential for thunderstorms across the deep tropics this year and combine that with the way that the climate forecast system this is the cfs the climate forecast system and it's the sea surface temperature anomalies valid for july 20th so here in just a couple of weeks we noticed that this particular model run has the eastern part of the mdr pretty warm compared to average almost that horseshoe shape uh, curvature here in the MDR and then all, look at all this warmth out here in the uh, kind of the southwestern Atlantic the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean this definitely goes to suggest that again we could be looking at some amplified threats this year uh, more towards the Gulf and the southwest Atlantic and then with this warm pool out here in the MDR, that is a little bit concerning because that's more juice, more fuel in, in the, the thermodynamic realm per se uh, for these tropical cyclones to take advantage of. And even though it's you know not crazy like five Celsius above average, even a half a degree is more than enough for tropical cyclones to fuel that. And so in the East Atlantic, you can see this very sharp drop off in temperatures, uh, the temperature anomalies over the past couple of days, really, the, the past week or two. It's been a pretty sharp decline down, but notice that today we are actually climbing back up. And our latest contributor here 
is about a positive three and a half degrees Celsius above the long-term average. And that is certainly quite substantial. So we'll be ha having to kind of take a look at that uh, in the next couple of weeks to see what's going to be happening. Now, what to expect for kind of the remainder here? Well, we'll first look at the GFS forecast. This is the 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. All right. So we're going to move this forward here. Now, notice that in the GFS forecast, there actually is this tropical wave here. I'm unsure whether or not it's this tropical wave coming off of Africa, but it looks like it could be. And this will be moving kind of southward. And then eventually the GFS does amplify some vorticity as the tropical wave tries to close off or, or really tries to develop and move out of the intertropical convergence zone. And so what you end up kind of having here is a little bit of energy that actually is moving into Trinidad, Tobago, and Grenada, and kind of some of the same areas that were impacted uh, there by PTC2, which now became Bonnie. But some of those same areas will have could have an amplified tropical wave at the very least coming through by Friday of this week. Now, no development is expected. If we look at the upper level wind environment, it's going to be pretty hostile. Uh, we will have this upper level low sitting over the Dominican Republic, and that's going to be creating some pretty strong shear in the Caribbean. So not really expecting any significant development at this time, but we'll be watching for that very closely. Now, if we shift to the GFS ensembles, and if we actually take a look here at the mean sea level pressure anomalies, so the departures from average here, what we'll notice is that over the next couple of days to about the next week or so, Lower than normal pressures are expected across most of the southeast U.S., the Gulf of Mexico, and even to some extent out here in the deep tropics. So not only will this increase the warming down here in the deep tropics, but we'll have to watch for any potential systems that get caught up in any fronts that manage to come through and decay in the southeast. This is kind of prime time environment for these tropical cyclones to kind of develop off at the tail end of fronts. And we'll have to see if we can get any more short-lived systems like Colin that uh, was most definitely a tropical storm. There, there was some debate about that, but it was no doubt a tropical storm. We'll have to see if we can get any uh, short-lived systems that can develop like that. And that's kind of this primed environment that's ready to go. In terms of the remainder, though, of the season, what we'll be looking for, this is the precipitation anomalies. And we'll move this out to August. Uh, what we'll notice here is that, again, we're kind of really seeing that in general terms here, we have pretty anomalously moist environment out here across the deep tropics, a much more moist environment out in the deep tropics and also the Caribbean for that matter as well is, is pretty moist as well. And if we continue that even into September, we notice that again, that kind of focuses again in the deep tropics over here and in the Caribbean. So if we remember back to a few weeks ago, when I was kind of talking about my hurricane threat areas, again, we kind of specified that in the deep tropics down here through the Caribbean, and then in the Southwest Atlantic is also going to be kind of a prime threat this year. And I do believe that is to be true, uh, especially with some of these forecast models that continue to come in. It certainly seems like that we could be looking at a pretty active Gulf and Caribbean this year. So uh, definitely kind of stay tuned and, and I'll be giving more specific updates uh, as we get kind of closer to time to the peak of the hurricane season. All right. So that being said, if you didn't see my video from yesterday, I posted this as the track of Tropic Storm Bonnie in the Atlantic Basin. If you want to go check it out, uh, you can do so here. It's on the video tabs and a link will be down in the description. So if you want to go watch it, you certainly can. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romelli. Have a happy and safe 4th of July, everybody. And I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.